have um, you have a story. It's about it's about a study that shows that a shock to the brain could help memory. Tell us a little bit more about the the study and what it means uh, moving forward. Sure. This is a small study. It was seven patients, seven human patients. Um, but what's exciting about it is that it uses a technique that's already being used to treat other kinds of diseases, and it involves stimulating the brain, implanting electrodes into the skull, and then stimulating the brain with, ele with a shot of electricity. And it's thought to sort of reset the, the faulty wiring in the brain. It's already being used to treat Parkinson's disease and chronic pain and sometimes depression as well. But this latest study showed in these seven patients that it actually seems to improve memory too. So though this is very, very early research, it suggests that maybe this is gonna, going to be a possible route for treating memory problems um, without using a, a drug, but rather using this other kind of technique. And um, the, uh, an interesting side note that you had in um, the story, the spark, pun intended, for, um, for, this, uh, for this study was actually was somewhat serendipitous, you wrote. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about that. That's right. Well, the, the idea of it first came about back in 2008 when the report was published from one patient who was actually being treated experimentally with this deep brain stimulation technique, but for obesity. And uh, this uh, patient apparently had all kinds of other problems associated with obesity and, and other, I think, depression as well, but they noticed that his memory improved. So this really stimulated a lot of interest in the field. And the group that first um, did the, the study on this man, they're from Toronto, they followed up with a very small study of six Alzheimer's patients and found that there seemed to be some possible improvements. But this study yesterday that was published by UCLA researchers is uh, sort of the the first one that really shows that, in fact, all, all seven of these patients did improve. So again, it's, it's still early days, but the findings yesterday, which were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, were very encouraging. Now, Shirley, uh, this is very similar to something my mother used to do. She used to whack me in the back of the head <laughs> uh, whenever I forgot to do something that I was supposed to do. Uh, but uh, it, that makes me think, you know, what, what are the risks? What are the, why aren't we all rushing out and getting uh, electrodes put on our head and a nice. Uh, current... Why can't we just slap each other? Yeah. Why can't we wear helmets? With, you know, and constant, and so we can remember everything we've done. What What is the issue in terms of uh, possible side effects or problems? Well, that's um, a, an excellent question, and one of the questions that is, is of course, very, very important to scientists. So, in terms of um, when deep brain, brain stimulation is used right now for patients, um, when the when the brain is actually um, stimulated with electricity, it's it's usually done continuously or in a repeated fashion, and in terms of the stimulation itself, there don't seem to be tremendous side effects. You don't really feel, you don't feel the, the jolt or anything. Um, but implanting the electrodes is a process um, where it requires drilling through the skull to, to put these probes in. And, and I think patients often describe that, um, that experience as quite uh, uncomfortable or disconcerting. Um, because it's, it, you know, it's, it's an invasive procedure. Right. Um, but in terms of for, for dementia patients, that is absolutely one of the questions they want to figure out is, you know, if this does work for dementia patients, you know, how safe is it? Are they going to be able to um, tolerate the, the electrodes being implanted and whatever possible side effects might occur? But to just point out with Parkinson's patients, a lot of those folks are also quite elderly and some of them do have dementia symptoms as well. So the thinking is that if it can be used in Parkinson's, then then theoretically, at least, there's no reason why it couldn't be used in Alzheimer's patients as well.